I really want him to get in and like she doesn't have a DVD player. It's like, ah, fuck it. Do you have a PlayStation? <laughs> yeah. God, so. I'm going to have to download. Why would I have to download an app for that? There's a, it's built into the fucking thing. I'm gonna go, I'm going to Circuit City, but I'll be back. <laughs> oh, now the TV's doing an update. What does that even mean? The TV <laughs> has software. What is the PlayStation on HDMI one or t- <laughs> it's on video game? If that's not well, the right that's remote. Not, that's what, how many remotes are there? God awful movie movie movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema until we find the crystal key and break the curse once and for all. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Very excited. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. The band is back together, baby. Right? It's been a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Taken... By grace, it's the story of taking all the most obnoxious character traits from Eli and me <laughs> and making one single person with all of that together yes, uh-huh. and then taking a really long road trip with that person <laughs> at gunpoint. <laughs> Plus, God or something. I don't know. It's even worse. It's, it's, it's even worse. And well, and with the most boring vanilla fucking couple you can imagine as the other people on the road trip. Yeah, yeah. Am I a loud eater? I feel like I'm a loud eater. <laughs> <laughs> By comparison, I'll never feel like a loud eater. Yeah, again. right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I get so into it, and then I like put my head up, and I, I, everybody's looking at me, and mm. I'm just like, oh, I was just chainsaw eating, right? <laughs> everybody's kind of just nodding. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you wish Thanksgiving with your mom's new husband was done at gunpoint, (laughs) you (laughs) will love this movie. I'm going to call this one Trains, Planes, and I Don't Know How to Feel. Okay. All right. That kind of rhymes. So was anybody else hoping for a Christian abducted by aliens movie when they first saw the title? Of course. I expected at least a character named Grace. No. Yeah, come on. We've 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 come to expect more on the nose titles from right? you, Christianity. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Okay, I would. I have a theory. So, I'm going to say best worst, Christopher Walken bet. Yeah. So, the main character or the the guy who the obnoxious me and Eli characteristics guy that we're going to get to mm-hmm. the actor. I'm quite certain made a bet with somebody that he could sneak in. A Christopher Walken impression like eight times in the movie without getting caught. <laughs> and he does it for like three words. All of a sudden it'll burst and he goes right back to his normal accent. It's really weird. Well, not his normal accent, his terrible effort at an American accent. That's the thing is I think he learned his American accent watching Christopher Walken. Oh, is he British or Scottish? He's Scottish, yeah. yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah he's right, got a really right. thick accent. His- but then out of nowhere, he's just like, wow. Yeah. And then back to his like <laughs> yes. bad Scottish guy doing American, yeah. All right, and I was going Heath, Heath has already kind of spoiled this one, but I was going to go with best worst mouth noises. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I have it in my notes somewhere, but I said, is there an opposite of ASMR? <laughs> <laughs> ASMT, ASM torture? So much of this movie is listening to this man loudly eat potato chips or, you know, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> my God, this man breathing is like me snoring. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'll say it elsewhere, but I said it's at one point I was watching this movie and I was like, is there a daytime CPAP machine? Because <laughs> this gentleman needs it. <laughs> if there's just an all the time, I guess that's a Vader mask. <laughs> is there a family of old pugs just out of the frame? <laughs> what is that? This, was, this was directed by my pug. Yeah, yeah okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> Did all the ADR. More huffing. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best twist that makes the entire movie pointless. Yep. Why were we going there? (laughs) No real reason was going there the entire fucking movie. Sure the fuck was. We have now watched multiple movies where the answer was it was a dream or they were in hell the whole time. None of them hold a candle to the uselessness (laughs) of this movie's plot. 
All right, well, I'll tell you what. This movie star is going to need a minute to build up sufficient phlegm for his performance, so we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the long drive with boring people levels of excitement that are taken by grace. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. You know, we try not to get too serious on this show. We know that many of you come here for a break from that stuff that's a bummer. And I promise we have a bunch of that stuff for you this week. That said, we know that this week and last week have been hard for a lot of you. News like what we've been getting lately can leave you feeling hopeless, alone, and afraid of what the future holds. So we just wanted to take a moment to remind you that even when you're facing real-world problems, therapy can help. A therapist can give you a place to vent, the tools you need to deal with what you're feeling, and a safe person to go to when you might not have others to confide in. And one of the places to get therapy is BetterHelp Online Therapy. Since we started advertising with them, we've had literally dozens of listeners write to us to say they found an amazing therapist through their service. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, they have a wide variety of expertise available, so if you need someone who's LGBTQ-friendly or isn't just going to tell you that the solution is Jesus, they can help you find that. And last but not least, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's betterhelp.com slash awful. Okay, now, back to the funny stuff, I promise. That's right, hands where I can see them. Where are you taking us? Yeah, why are you kidnapping us? All right, if you must know, we're going to go kill the man who murdered my son. Oh, Oh, okay. Wait, what do you mean, okay? Oh, she means we'll help you. Duh. Yeah, let's take that dude to Beef Town. Oh, wow. You guys mean it? Sure do. Someone killed my son. I do the same thing. Same thing. Exactly. Obviously. All right, then. You you guys want some chips? Uh, bup, 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 bup. No eating in the car. But I have a gun. You have chip fingers is what you have. Fine, fine. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up watching a dude stumble towards the house with a triggeringly dirty window. <laughs> <laughs> a smudgy thumbprints on that one. But then we get the, the guy breaks the glass and breaks into the house. <laughs> yeah. So little glass. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have window breaking money, but they did have glass dropping money, which is impressive. Uh, but for a little bit of that. Yeah, right. They didn't have as much glass dropping money as they had window showing. There's this tidy ass <laughs> little amount of glass as though he just punched out a teeny little window that was going to allow him to like reach in and open a door. Right, which is where I thought they were going. But no, he jumps down like he climbed <laughs> through the little tiny decorative window on a door. <laughs> Somebody just like spits out a small mouthful of broken glass. Right. And then yeah. he steps onto it. Yeah. It drops a tic tac and they're like, that's a window. <laughs> just have him pick a lock or like kick the door. Have it be open. It doesn't matter. Why right? would they go through all this trouble <laughs> to have such a shitty glass breaking moment? Yeah, right. Exactly. If you can't do the glass breaking thing, do a different thing. Yeah, so, but this guy that we barely see, he, he breaks into a house, he passes right by all the valuable jewelry, and he goes straight for the gun, and the, well, he goes to a desk, and he starts looking through drawers until he finds a gun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> can I zoom out the camera slightly and talk about the meta implications of this, given the plot of the movie? Sure. This guy gets out of jail. We're going to learn that his plot is to go kill the person who killed his son, right? Mm -hmm. So, are we expected to believe that he gets out of jail and just breaks into houses until he finds a gun. What? Not only that, but we're supposed to believe that it took exactly one house and exactly one piece of furniture for him to. I mean, this is America, so maybe that's. It's true. I mean, honestly, that might be the case, right? It might yeah. be. I feel like you just look for the first house that has more than one American flag and you break yeah. in and you find a fucking gun. <laughs> yeah. For anyone who's got a Punisher logo on their car. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. I'm going to find a it. gun in this Nailed house. Nailed it. Oh, there's one holstered on the side of this car. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even have to break in. Uh, the Supreme Court says you have to let him do it. <laughs> so, yeah. So he takes this gun. He leaves a little post-it note on the guy's TV and also takes some cheap whiskey with him while he, when he goes. You know, this trope always happens where they, like, grab the bottle of whiskey just once. I want to watch a sketchy burglar make himself a nice old-fashioned, right, with, with the big <laughs> single ice cube and everything. <laughs> I thought he was going to leave a second post-it. So he leaves the first one like, 
You know, like he clipped a parked car, but yes, like right, I robbed yeah. your house. <laughs> right, yeah. Sorry about that. And then he takes the whiskey. And I want him to be like, okay, second post it. And I stole <laughs> also, your three half quarters bottle of a bottle. Of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Why don't you have ingredients for old fashioned? <laughs> Question. Third post it, and I took three post its. <laughs> <laughs> I and actually found some of the ingredients for old fash. I took that too. <laughs> so, okay, and then we get the title, Take It by Grace, and then we cut to this couple out camping. Now, what the writer was going for was this is a couple that's having some trouble. What we actually get is Hillary Duff's sister, that's the character Carrie, <laughs> trying to turn everything into a fist fight. It's Haley Duff. Starring Haley Duff. That's Christian cinema in a goddamn it nutshell. Really is, isn't it really yeah. so We're celebrity rough. adjacent guys. You know someone burst into the room and they were like, guys, I got <laughs> Haley <laughs> Duff. Will Hillary come to the premiere? No, she's busy. <laughs> I got Pleatherface from the Chainsaw Master. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I got to say, the other, the dude, the guy who's played her husband, his like known force on IMDb include like production designer on God's Not Dead. So she is kind of a big star in these in these circles. Perfect. Of yeah. course she is. <laughs> She's how they nabbed that Scottish actor after all. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, and I've got my nose like, are they just are they desperately ad libbing or did someone actually let, write these words down? We're gonna learn by the fact that all of the dialogue in the movie is this bad that yes, someone actually wrote all of this down. Do you think they wrote that down? Because they're arguing about s'mores and he's burning his marshmallows, which is awesome because then it's it the way has that extra like flavor correct. to it. Yeah. And she's yelling at it like, fuck you. No, of course you burn the marshmallow a little bit. And and she's going like, stop burning all your marshmallows. And he's like, I'm the one eating them. She's like, I I'm know. Eating, I'm not prepared. I just have to be the bitchy wife right now. Damn it. <laughs> right. Well, what's crazy is he goes, I like him like that. She says, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then she accuses him of forgetting the chocolate. She's like, all right, I'm ready for chocolate. Fine, whatever. I don't care about the marshmallow thing. We're making s'mores. Where's the chocolate? And he's like, I I wasn't supposed to get the chocolate. She's like, I told you specifically you were supposed to get the chocolate. And he starts yelling. He's like, you didn't, you're you gaslighting me right now about the marshmallow. I, I do like marshmallows like that. You did not tell me. And they just keep fighting about That's the source of their marital problem right now. Yes. I also want to point out that they will continue to kind of have this fight for the next 90 minutes of the yep. film. <laughs> About every single thing that comes up. Yeah. And also, like, the music is taking this s'mores fight way seriously. Like, the, like this is a divorce-worthy fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the kind of couple that starts a forest fire with their gender reveal. Is what I have in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely correct. And I feel bad because, you know, she's, she's written right now. This character's written mm. as this, like, horrible woman who's lying here. But she walks away and she's like, it's not about a marshmallow, Sean. And like, it was, though. It was about. It was it, entirely about, about a marshmallow. You're gaslighting yeah. again. It was right. about that. And then they both apologize later. So yeah, there's also this great moment where she's like, I'm going to go sleep in the truck. And we get to watch her harumphily lay down in the back of this SUV where there's no room to actually lay down. <laughs> right. So she like curls herself up into this. Like, come on, like a dog couldn't sleep that yes. curled up. Right. She's doing the dog thing. She's like circling and <laughs> sighing loudly as she tries to get comfortable on the pillow. She's digging. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, Haley Dove? There's <laughs> no dirt there. Yeah, but then she comes back out and she's like, I'm sorry, I've decided not to sleep in the truck. It has nothing to do with the fact that I had to curl up in it. <laughs> right. And he says, I'm sorry, too. But no, like, who was supposed to get the chocolate? That's the person. Whoever was supposed to, that's who has to apologize and nobody else. Yeah, relationship advice from me. <laughs> I was going to say. Be right. That's That's <laughs> how the world is supposed to work. I don't want to part the curtain too far for the podcast listener at home, but most of Heath's notes from this scene are about the, who was supposed to bring the marshmallow and who was Just supposed get, to bring Everybody the, get their jobs right. Be correct. There Do it go. right. That's what matters. So, but just then, as they're making up, Robert the Bruce shows up. This is the main character. He's the guy that broke into the house and he's the guy that played Robert the Bruce in Braveheart. So she, he shows up to drunkenly hang out at their campfire is that do campers just like go over to neighbor campers and say hi? Do they do they use the word neighbor? Yeah, in <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've had that happen a number of times. And you you say hi like that? Yeah. Well, so and here's the thing: there are approximately three million items 
that a camper that's next to you might ask to borrow from you. Hot dog buns is not generally one of those <laughs> items. It's so funny. But who is supposed to buy the hot dog buns? Like, that's important. <laughs> Hello, neighbors. I was just trying to buy not murder. <laughs> I would like to borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Normal. <laughs> But here's the thing. He pulls out a gun in like eight seconds from now, so he didn't need to make up the lie. Right. He could just be like, hi, I have a gun. Yeah, it's not like he talks them into a spot <laughs> or anything. Yeah, right. So he's like, can I borrow hot dog buns? And they're like, you can borrow hot dog buns and hot dogs. We brought hot dogs that we weren't going to use. It's like, really? Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, trust me. It was a whole thing. I started to roast it over the fire, and she was like, raw, you like them raw. So we just decided <laughs> to leave them in the back. <laughs> and he's like, well, thank you. Would you like a, a drink straight out of my whiskey bottle? And they're like, no. And he's like, what are you, Christian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. His response to touch your mouth to where I touched my <laughs> mouth is Mormons, huh? And of course, they're like, well, yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> but he explains he's not a Christian because he got kicked out of Christianity for chewing gum. Carrie explains that hashtag not all Christians, right? Because there's also this weird moment where she's like, well, you know, it seems like if you got kicked out of Christianity for, for just that and didn't go back, maybe you were just looking for an excuse to not go to church. And I'm like, that's an awfully judgy tone to take with drunk guy you just met. <laughs> Yeah. Also, like he he says that he was like eight when he got kicked out. So she was like, I don't know. Maybe you were just an asshole. Have you considered that? Right. Yeah. Maybe you were just an eight year old that was in love with his sin. I do have to say, though, the response they give to the gum thing, I genuinely laughed out loud because she goes, our church isn't like that. It's cool. And her husband just goes, they allow gum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So he pulls out the gun. By now, I'm kind of rooting for him and he's like I need your car and there's this great moment where Carrie the wife says I have the keys but the actor doesn't have the like sh the husband actor has the keys right so she has to go I have the keys and then turn to Sean and say give him the keys <laughs> here you go Sean you <laughs> reshoot that? We, can, we don't get to reshoot that huh okay but then and this is going to be an, an important plot point we learn that this character's name is Lucas, the Robert the Bruce's character. He's Lucas Blackstone. What an awesome name they've given him there. Lucas doesn't know how to read a map, and they don't have GPS for their truck, so he actually needs to kidnap them so they can direct him to the place he's going. Okay, okay. he reads, though. Yep. We see that he can read and write words. Sure can. Reading a map beyond words is just looking at spatial relationships. <laughs> Thank you. That's not read. Who? That's nothing. He says, I don't do maps. Exact words. And by the way, this will be a running through line, by the way. Yes. It's not like they just throw that out there and that's the last time we hear about that in the movie. We will later watch him almost drown in a map. Right. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't he can't even unfold them. I get not being able to fold them back. That's a whole different story. But yeah, so they get in the car and then he says, don't you guys have GPS? And Sean, the husband, says, I don't need GPS. I can read a map. And I'm like, that's where the boomers are supposed to stand up and fist pump, guys. Oh, that is what that was. Yep. I bet that's why that line is there, because the boomers like, fuck, yeah, I don't paper have GPS. maps. And we liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> one of those. Honey, you get on the Dove channel and you give that five stars yes, right now. <laughs> right, right. So, OK, so now we're going to cut to the cops that are checking out that bedroom that he took the gun from before. And can I just say, I almost went with like best, worst psychic cops. Yes. These cops will walk into every space they're ever in and be like, well, the script says we know what happens next. So shall we head yes. on out? Right. They're like, what's nearby here? A campsite. I think you might be onto something. Why would you think that? <laughs> Why would you assume anyone who broke into a house would then go to nearby areas? Right. <laughs> well, he's going to want to probably check out the neighborhood, I guess. <laughs> You know how you do a burglary and then you do like a brief walking tour of the town? Right. So they, they head out to the campsite and then we cut back to the abduction. Oh, my God. This is where we watch Lucas struggle with the seatbelt <laughs> like a toddler. He's literally 
pulling as much like you did when you were a kid. He's pulling as much seatbelt as he can until he hits the thing. And then he's like letting go. And he goes like, <laughs> yeah, no, if this is his first experience, like with a physical body, a lot of this movie makes sense. now. Yes. I wrote in my notes. I cannot stress how much of this movie will be this guy struggling to get out of everyday objects, seatbelts, <laughs> jackets, his emotions, yes. etc. <laughs> Just trying to stretch a map across his body and lock it in. That's all right. No, see, you know, see, that's why I can't. That's why I need you guys. I need help. I'm stuck. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is where we learned that he's fresh out of prison. And then we head back to the campsite where the cops find this hastily abandoned campsite, right? Yes. Now, apparently, they took the time to put the fire out. That's just good safety, but everything else they left right there. Right. And from this, the cops are like, well, there's no chance these people are anywhere but kidnapped, so we will assume they are kidnapped and on the road for the rest of this movie. Right. They're like, well, you know, the car's missing. I'm like, you know, because a lot of times people camp without cars. <laughs> a lot, very often there's a whole type of camp. It's so, but yeah, they're like, there's no car here. Do you think maybe they just went and got, you know, some, some McDonald's or something? And they're like, no, that is not fucking possible they're kidnapped they've been abducted they're kidnapped yeah in the words of sherlock holmes they're kidnapped <laughs> <laughs> all right so we cut back to the truck lucas is now going through carrie's purse okay current theory lucas is a toddler who got big like tom hanks and then he just has a gun okay all right yeah yeah because he doesn't know how purses work very well also, he picks up her money. They used fake money, guys. Yeah. That was fake fucking money. I zoomed they, they in on it. They didn't have money money. No. <laughs> and it's not like she had to have... It's not like there was a briefcase full of $100 bills or whatever, right? They needed, like, a realistic amount of money that some lady might have had in her... They needed the amount of money Haley probably had in her purse that day. Well, I think they went to the wrong Duff sister for money in the purse <laughs> level <of> crop <laughs> management. <laughs> But Lucas is like, well, you know, we've got uh, 90 minutes to kill in this movie. Uh, to, why don't you guys tell me your backstory? Oh, my God. Seven year itch. Am I right? Yeah. They, you guys open? <laughs> no. A lot. Of, a lot of this movie could be that. And they they obviously couldn't do that in a Christian movie. It could be this guy just being like, are we doing a No. <laughs> OK. I just I'm so much more attractive than Sean. I just. <laughs> And then we get this, it's so long. So he, he tries that, maybe, I don't know. But then he's like, so you got kids? No, I had a kid. Gone now. Uh, I'm thinking of a person. <laughs> it's that's so rough. <laughs> yeah, it's a kidnapping. A lot of the movie will be exactly that. He's doing small talk. Yes. Yep. And he's so bad at it that he's doing like his dead kids small talk. It's so <laughs> rough. There are multiple scenes in the movie where a character pauses and goes. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Over and over. This is this is anyway the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so we check back in with the cops. They found the chick's cell phone, right? They called it and then used the magical GPS towers to determine where it was. So they, they drive to the side of the road where Lucas has thrown it out, right? He threw it out of the car when he was checking out the contents of the purse. So that's where the cops wind up. The notion that these cops would do any of this within a month of these people being dead and buried yes. is the most fantastical <laughs> part of the movie. And in the universe of this movie, God exists. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to the kidnapped guys getting gas. Sean needs to pee, right? So he's like, he's like, hey, man, I got to go and use the bathroom. They're like, why? It's like, because we need a scenery change. This has been the fucking truck and the damn cops over and over again. We got to do something. It's like, all right, all right. We'll head to the bathroom. Oh, and the scene with Sean trying to figure out what he can MacGyver in this bathroom into an escape plan is phenomenal. Every single one of us have way too long with the plunger in our nose. What was he thinking? He was, you know, if I shove this up his ass, maybe <laughs> yeah. he'll get excited about the butt stuff. He's been in prison, you know. Well, yeah, he he grabs the plunger and he looks at, and then he turns it over. Yeah. And looks at the uh, like, what did you were checking the uh, the other side of it for weapon stuff? See if there was a <laughs> gun hiding in there or something. Yeah. And also just now you're touching the plunger in a public bathroom all of it on the bottom. <laughs> so much. Come on, man. 
and of course we see here so as he walks by to get to the bathroom the cashier is asleep on the counter and the cashier is the only funny man in christian film tory martin tory martin do we know we i feel like we know this guy from other he was shit, in the right? kidnapping the other kidnapping movie yeah the funny kidnapping movie he's been yeah. in a couple of movies that we've seen oh and, the funny one right? yeah, yeah yeah the funny red-haired guy no idea what we're talking about tory martin is second only to David A.R. White's divorce in the things about this job that make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but Tori Martin is the cashier, but he's asleep. He sleeps through this whole scene. Even when Lucas buys some stuff, it just puts money on his head. It's it's quite funny. Weird to watch him like do the taxes and pull out the coins and everything. Right. So okay. Yeah, right. So, okay, so, and then we cut back to Sean. Sean has finally come up with, like, okay, that plunger didn't have a gun in it. I'm going to write some stuff on the mirror with soap. And I'm like, wow, man, you should have come up with that way sooner. <laughs> also, the thing he writes is so stupid. <laughs> yes. Yes. He writes in soap on the mirror, kidnapped the name of the road they're on. Yes. So just like, I am kidnapped here Right, this is the, that's the road that the gas station is on. Obviously, you were on that road at that time. <laughs> we know where you were when you wrote that. No. I am writing this now, me, <laughs> in time and space. Today. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. He does, and, he, and look, he knows that, obviously, he knows it, it, the make and model of his car. He might know his license plate. He knows the address where they're going. Yeah. It would have been better for him to try to draw the bad guy in soap. <laughs> yep. More useful. So, yeah. But, of course, Lucas comes in and sees the mirror, the note that he's left on the mirror. And he's like, hey, wipe that mostly off, but not all the way. Let's go. Actually, you know what? That's super dumb. It doesn't matter. Don't even do it. <laughs> That's not helpful to it's anybody. It's not going to help anybody, even in this own in this fucking movie. <laughs> okay. Crazy billionaire remake of this movie. He angrily storms in to find Sean taking his shit. He's just like, wait a minute. Ow, what are you doing? Just, sorry. sorry. You, were, <laughs> you were taking a while. Yeah. It was Turned out I thought I only had to pee, but then I got in here. and I was worried maybe you found a gun in the plunger. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so he mostly wipes it up. They, they go back to the car, and now Lucas is going to zip tie Sean's wrists to the steering wheel to make sure he doesn't try anything else. Which, like, what if he has to use the turn signal or put the car in drive? <laughs> yep. Like, there's so much shit you need to do that requires you not to have your hands <laughs> zip tied to the steering wheel. Also, he wasn't zip tied this no. whole time until now. So, like, what... Whatever, <laughs> nothing new is going to happen. Right, well, right, exactly. Well, yeah, it's not like the drawing the fucking note on the mirror with soap would have been helped by him being <laughs> zip tied to the steering wheel, unless he's supposed to pee there from now on. In fact, that's like a really good signal to this kidnapper to be like, oh, this guy's fucking dumb. I don't have to do anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, he wrote here on a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I just have to point this out that as he's doing that, Lucas is breathing so heavily that the other actors become concerned for him. He's like, I'll try to tell you to fucking. <sighs> and I, I have to point out, too, that they actually show a, a close up of him putting the zip tie in backwards. Yep, they sure do. <laughs> so you didn't notice that that went in a little easily there. Yeah, Lucas. Luckily, they're all dumb. Okay. So later that night, Lucas is in the back seat shoveling down potato chips with all the refinement and sophistication of a 12th century English peasant. This is the best. We cannot communicate to you how long people chew potato chips in this bucket. It's, a, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Well, okay, so there's the suspense of this scene is that Sean is trying to get his nail clippers off of the console so that he could use them to, like, clip the zip ties around his wrist, right? And the whole time he's doing that, and he's, he drops them on the floor and has to pick them up with his feet and all of that shit, we're just listening to Lucas eat potato chips. That's all he has. No lines. That's the no only dialogue. thing in the script. So he, he's, we watch him eat one at the beginning, and then he's just stacking them. He's just like, yeah, what well, about four just... time? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can do four. Eight. 
Oh, yeah. This is, and, and then he starts asking them about their boring ass life, and I was like, oh my god, I wish Marsh was on so he could feel better about his American accent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's more terrible small talk. He's like, so you guys, you guys eat uh, dinner, well, like a uh, dinner table, or do you just like watch TV at the coffee table? What? <laughs> Why are we talking about this? <laughs> do you pick a show to binge together, or do you like rotate? I pick, you pick, I pick, you pick. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> I have a gun. You have to talk to me. You have to- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have Paramount Plus? <laughs> so, and then he starts talking about how hot Haley Duff is he's like your wife is very beautiful and just then Sean gets his zip ties unclipped so we have a silliness fight oh my god it's amazing <laughs> For okay first of all no we should talk about the silliness fight I just have to point out that when he's complimenting Hillary Duff's sister he does like the he's like she's so and then he looks at Haley Duff and he's like Weren't you getting out of those handcuffs to go punch me in the face? <laughs> man? Man, it's so average height. The yeah. script very clearly has a hyphen after the word so. <laughs> well, and so, okay, the writer, when they penned this fucking masterpiece, obviously imagined some hair raising mid car combat as the car swerved around the road or whatever, but they're not allowed to get footprints on the seats of this car, right? They don't have footprints on the seats kind of money. So all we see is like, he just stops the car a little too quickly and then we see him in a shoulder shaking match immediately afterwards. Him and and, uh, Luke. He he pulls over and he's, he's supposed to be angry husband. And so he like pulls over, parks, Yep. And then he has to dive sideways and backwards into the back seat at the kidnapper. But he comes up short with the dive yeah. because, you know, <laughs> it's a car with like a console in there. So right, he yeah. kind of gets stuck on the hump of the con- the center console and he's just like, I'm and Lucas grabbing your leans lapel though. Forward. Yeah, right. Lucas leans forward to help him out and she's just like, oh, well, yeah, you're not going to be able to reach over that console. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me let me lean forward so you can at least touch my zipper. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they get in their shoulder shaking match. He gets out of the car. The car is running. Right. Lucas steps out of the car and walks around to the other side of it. They have so much time to leave right now. <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind that he steps around the car at Lucas speeds, too. So he like stops for a breather. Yeah. He takes a knee <laughs> at daytime CPAP speeds. Yes, exactly. Right. They could just drive away, but they don't. He opens the door. He's like, get out of the car. And then he takes the key and they're like, oh, you know, we should have. Uh, uh, fuck. Never mind. <laughs> so then he he. Forces them into the back of the SUV as though they're in a trunk, but it's not a trunk because it's an SUV, right? They could just climb over the seat and be back in the trunk. <laughs> they're not in a different compartment or anything. Honestly, if they had done that, if That's, he had like, gone that. around to the front exactly. and he crawls over and starts to strangle him again. Oh, God, all right, all right, fine. Ow, ow. <laughs> but he's like, oh, what do I do? He gets the map. And this is the part where, of course, he can't figure out how maps work. He's like, how do I hold this in front of my face? Okay, (laughs) honest, genuinely, if the rest of this movie had just been this actor rolling around on the map like my pug (laughs) with a paper towel when she wants attention, I was fucking in. (laughs) I thought he was going to try and jump into the map like Dora the Explorer. Well, also, while he's doing that, we cut back to Carrie and Sean, and the, and Carrie's like, "Hey, when you uh, when you jumped over the console halfway and grabbed that guy's zipper, it was fucking hot. I gotta say, I was fucking, I was what? I was what? You got physically dominated by the older guy who is very drunk and having trouble breathing constantly, but like but in still, a sexy I'm, way, but a for effort, <laughs> and by a I mean anal." <laughs> So she's like, you know, so do you, hey, you want to you wanna knock out a quick hero? And she, he's like, you know, we're, we're fucking kidnapped, right? And she's like, eh, you know. But just then. Exactly. <laughs> Lucas shows back up. He opens the thing and he apologizes for overreacting, right? He's like, I really got carried away when you, when you left. Over. Do, do you mind just doing the same thing we were doing before this scene starts? And they're like, all right, but only if you pinky swear not to make it weird. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I wrote in my notes. I'm allowed to say I want to fuck your wife. You're not allowed to be offended by that. And this guy slash Noah's inbox. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's never a good sign when Act One ends with the actors agreeing to a do-over. So we're gonna pause to write our heads, but we're back in a flash with even more 
taken by grace. Okay, what if we froze the water? That's ice, dude, not food. But you you chew it. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I were just trying to figure out how to feed everyone during Matreon this year. Yeah, Eli's vegan. Thomas is pescatarian. You only eat Hot Pockets. So it's like a whole thing. Plus, Marsh and Nicola are British. So if the food has too many spices, they die. Die? I don't think that last one is real. Look, guys, if you're trying to deal with a house of picky eaters, why not try HelloFresh? Oh, what's... HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. That sounds great. It is. And the picky eaters in your life get to choose from 55 plus weekly options featuring pre proportioned high quality ingredients picked at peak ripeness. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week so you can savor summer flavors right from home. Okay, but what about the special diets? HelloFresh has low-carb, carb-smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian options every week, so there's something for everyone. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts? That's right. All right, well, problem solved. So what were you guys working with before I told you about HelloFresh? Uh, ice. Mostly ice. Yeah. I, I don't I don't really like ice. Okay. Yeah, there it is. You know, your wife is a beautiful woman. If I was married to a woman that beautiful. You get your yeah. damn hands off of her, sir. Oh, yeah, fine, fine. I'm gonna leave the car now. I'm leaving. Wow. That was uh that was really heroic. I'll always fight for you, babe. No, I mean, like, I mean, like, that was hot. Uh, I mean, thank you. I, I, look, we're, we're still very much in danger, though. In danger of drowning in sploosh, if you know what I mean. Okay, Carrie, we're, we're still kidnapped, though. Are we? Are we kidnapped? Because I'm pretty sure I could slip right out of these zip ties using only sploosh fricant, if you know what I mean. Don't know what you mean. Sploosh. Are uh, you guys okay back there? Uh, yeah, man, we're fine. No, no, we're not. He's in danger. He's in a lot of danger. Oh, he is? Of drowning in sploosh. Please stop saying sploosh. You guys are weird. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the cops getting to that gas station that Tori Martin worked at. Yes, he's going to wake up in this scene. We're going to get Tori Martin, Tori Martining it up. <laughs> yeah. There has been a theme of Tori Martin tries to save the shitty Christian <laughs> yes. movies for our last couple of episodes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they the cops come did in. He? They he tried. He did his best. He tried, did his best. They wake him up and he wakes up. He's got a dollar bill sticking to his face. Cause come on, that's that's fucking funny. And they're like, Hey man, did anybody come in here while you were asleep? And he's like, That's a stupid fucking thing to ask him of me, <laughs> and I'm gonna answer it. <laughs> Let me ask my lucid dreaming self, Grapthar. Yeah. <laughs> But he's like, no, no, no customers came in. I, I didn't fall asleep. And they're like, dude, there was literally money on your head just now where where Lucas put it when he paid for his shit. Do you just lay your head down with money on your head? He's like, right, right. Yes, it's for my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is where the writer has to do technology, right? And they're like, this movie might as well be set in 2071 in terms of what this fucking nowhere ass gas station surveillance technology is <laughs> zoom and enhance on it that might. man oh yeah no problem i got it right here next to the pork skin oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cops are like i see your surveillance camera let me see the video on this he's like yeah i have a full color video playback machine that can immediately find the second you're looking at right beside my cash register <laughs> what i got pork skin fingers though you oh, yes. the <laughs> yeah, exactly. you'll have to do the touch screen so yeah so they look at the fucking video they zoom and enhance yep and then one of the cops says to tori martin print that print that yes Print it from your security <laughs> camera printer. <laughs> that this backwoods gas station has attached to their color playback monitor on the fucking counter. And Tori Martin goes, of course, I'm, it's, yeah. it's already printed. <laughs> I wanted it to come out of the receipt printer. And it's, it's really super long. You got Walgreens receipt. God damn it. I just wanted the picture at the top. 
<laughs> so yeah, so they they, they uh, the other cop goes in to check out the bathroom and see if there's any messages on the mirror. And while he's doing that, poor Tori desperately tries to interject a bit of humor in here. He's got some clue jokes because they're cops, they're detectives, and he likes to play clue. Yeah, he's like, I'm basically a cop now, right? Because I'm helping you got I'm I did the video thing and the I mean the printing thing's crazy. Obviously, that's nothing. But like I help I pressed the well, I didn't really press the button because I had the fingers, but like I'm helping. <laughs> I'm a cop. And then he's like, I'm really good at clue. Yes. Okay. I didn't exaggerate the tone of that line. No. no. He said it in a sexy whisper, right? <laughs> yes. yes. My note is, I think Tori is offering to suck them both off. And honestly, I'm here for <laughs> it. <laughs> and then, so, okay. So the other cop sees that the message is still legible on the fucking mirror, right? They're on Route 4. Of course, that's where they are already. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's such a great moment where he's like, kidnapped Route 4. That's nothing. That's I I had that information on. He runs back out. Partner, we're on route for it. No, okay. Yeah, I thought I had a thing. That's he didn't right. even put northbound on there. He didn't even write which direction. I like we know because the campsite is south of us, but Jesus. And by the way, in the time it took cop number two to check the bathroom, cop number one has already gotten the fucking printout from Tory Martin, and the cops have identified the man in the video. Yes. He's like, this is Lucas Blackstone. He got out of jail for manslaughter just yesterday. Like, how the fuck would you know that? Tom Cruise is in the corner holding a wooden ball inscribed with his name being like, this is, this is very unrealistic, guys. This makes no fucking sense. Hold on. Let me see that printout. Let's compare it to the soap drawing of this guy. Yeah, that's it. It's Lucas Blackstone. Yep, yep. So he knew the guy's name. He could have written that on the... Yeah. So, okay. Then we cut back to the truck where Lucas is loudly breathing at us. <laughs> it's time for more inappropriate questions. He opens with, I'm curious, what would you do if I killed your wife? Ugh. Stay with me. Stay with me. I am going somewhere with this. <laughs> to be fair, I've, I've, I've like <laughs> gone through our Q&A questions before. This is not the most awkward one. <laughs> like This was one of the questions. It wouldn't be the worst one we've ever gotten. So yeah. No. What he's trying to get to is, I'm asking about that because I'm asking just in general if it's cool to avenge a murder with a murder. I just want to know your opinion on that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, had, I had the hypothetical thing involved murdering your specific wife. I get how. And what is this, a presidential debate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really wanted Sean to answer too fast. Like, oh, no, I'd probably marry your friend Kimberly. Like, I've always got the vibe. <laughs> so, she mad? I'm not looking. So. <laughs> Yeah, but of course, they're like, we would forgive them because we're Christians and we're better than other people. And he's like, no, come on. If I killed her, what if what if I killed her with a knife slowly? Yeah, it's so good. And again, like they haven't written out the dialogue. So he's like, no, you would. And he's like, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. I wouldn't. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I am reading the script right now. Yes, you would. <laughs> This is also where he tells us the, the tragic backstory of the guy who murdered his son. His son was murdered by a man named Trig. Yes. Which is short for Trigger, which is what they called him as a kid because he was so good at guns. Yeah. And, and we see a tiny little hint of a flashback here, which we're going to go back to several more times. We see that his son was killed in a hunting accident in the woods. Right. Right. But the movie doesn't seem to. I mean, that's that's what happens. But and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I thought that it was trying to show us that like Trig just happened to be dressed as a hunter while he murdered his child. I, I'm very confused. Well, right, yeah, that's kind of what they're getting at. Like, like, like that the guy took the kid out into the woods and hunted him yeah. or something. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so we we cut back to the cops who are heading into you know to a non-specific place on Route Four, looking for possibly cars. <laughs> Uh, and, and this is where they find out that Lucas was a Marine. This never matters. Yeah. I, he got discharged. That's important. Yeah. Bubblegum, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was really hoping that his inability to read a map got his whole platoon killed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but they find out that he got discharged for like having a rough go of it in Nam or whatever. And the cops are like, wow, that's not even it's not even a relevant plot thread. What? What? Where are we going? Right. But they also find out that he has an ex-wife that lives up Route 4. So he's probably going there. Yeah. 
We learned one of the cops' names here. It's Gunderson. Oh, is it? <laughs> it just, yeah. So very clearly, these script people trying to come up with the, what's what's the name for cop? Gun. What? Gunderson. Gunderson. You- <laughs> <Gunderson. laughs> Mick Gunderson. Polisa. No, no. Mick Gun stuff. Yeah. Polisa. <laughs> you think the first name of the cop is Polisa? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so, Polisa Simpson. So we head back to the. SUV and Carrie's diabetes is kicking in, right? She needs to eat something. Okay, but this is the best part. I also wrote that. I was like, oh, she has diabetes or something. But no, it's just low blood sugar. So I really wanted the rest of the movie just for her to be hangry, right? Like, she's like, <laughs> and I remember my boy. And she's like, oh my God, finish your story. <laughs> Carrie? I feel like it could also, she's not feeling well. Could be the kidnapping thing, too. Yeah. She's the victim of a kidnapping. Right, yeah, because that's no, all. No, it's, it's fructose malabsorption, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so so they're like, yeah, we got to stop and get her food or bad things. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, we wouldn't want bad things. So let's go to a quote unquote different gas station. Certainly not <laughs> the same one from before. You guys were expecting fat guy in a mustache, right? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> behind the counter. Yeah, Hello, I'm different gas station. This time, welcome. Yeah, is your shirt on backwards? That's nothing. <laughs> also, I, I have to point out. So, Lucas is like, "Oh, well, give me the key, and I'll go in and get her a banana or whatever." My wife and I both have keys to our car. Yep. Right. Like so. Like this plan would we would thwart this dude so fucking easy. <laughs> yeah. But he has to go inside so they could try and make a plan while he's not there. But they just spend the entire time arguing about whether they should make a plan instead of making a plan. Right. right. And whose fault it is that they don't have a plan. Yeah. And then they finally realize, all right, we haven't made a plan yet. We need to figure out a plan. He's standing right behind me. He's, he's, he came back <laughs> and he's right there. What's the plan, guys? What plan? Right. He says he says to Carrie, he's like, you have to distract him. He's like they're whispering, but he's like in between the two of them at that point. Yeah. Yep. We need to figure out a plan. Uh, I'd like a chip past uh, chips. (laughs) So so he gets back to the car with her banana and he says, hey, you know, before we leave, I want to really dig into the least interesting storyline that we've got going on. That would be the fact that you two are fighting. Right. This is where he learns that the real reason that she's mad about his marshmallows and bananas is because he had an affair. Yeah. Okay. I have to point out the acting in this scene is so bad. This like confessing thing is Mm -hmm. so bad that my notes for this scene are based on my incorrect assumption that he's lying about an affair and that she was the one who actually had it. (laughs) So I spent... (laughs) Literally the rest of the movie being like, when are they going to reveal that Haley had an affair? Nope. They're just such terrible actors. I lost the entire plot of the film for 12 minutes. Wow. I liked Blackstone's acting, though, in this. In the whole movie, honestly. Did you? I, I liked his act. I liked I liked his like power move chip eating. I liked everything about this <laughs> actor for some reason. All right. Well, you know, honestly, when you put him up against all of these folks, yeah, he really stands out. It's true, yeah. Right. And at this moment, in the he got bored with the kidnapping and he's like, I want to be a marriage counselor now. So he just starts asking him more questions and he finds out about the affair and he's like really having fun with it. Like he's a like a talk show host. Yeah. Yeah. He's moving back and forth between. So she's in the back seat and Sean is in the front and he's like moving back and forth like he's doing a 60 minutes interview between them. Like, oh, and how do you feel about that? Yeah. Was she, was she hot? Was, was she the girl you cheated on? With? He had an hot? affair. Oh, and he's holding him back. <laughs> Maury's suddenly outside Lucas, the car now, too. Lucas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and again, just to be clear, the plot of this movie is that Lucas is avenging his child's murder and he has paused that to. Bother this couple with marital problems. Best. That's yep. what this movie's about right now. At one point, the couple's like, can we just keep doing the kidnapping, please? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> is, it your, is it your son's killer getting away? And Lucas Flax to the kidnapper's like, no, Sean, we cannot stop talking about this. I am enjoying. I have a gun. You have to do whatever I say. We're still doing the kidnapping, but this now. Yeah. And Carrie, meanwhile, is going like, please stop. I'm not a good enough actor to maintain this level of emotion much longer. (laughs) Okay. At this point, I was like, all right. If this guy, Lucas Blackstone, is actually secretly 
an amazing couples counselor doing a long con thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Both the best movie and the greatest therapy ever created. Yeah, doing a Jack Nicholson anger management. Yeah, that's right. Business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, but they finally they get through this marriage counseling scene. Later on, we're, we're in the same fucking car. Lucas is still making excessive mouth noises. Now he, we get the fact that he's drinking beers this whole time as well. Oh, it's so good. He switched to beer, but he's drinking the beer like it's potato chips. Somehow. <laughs> I, he is somehow chewing his beer. He's, he's crunching the beer sips. Every sip's like a power move victory sip, and he <laughs> stares at you over the side of the beer. It's the best. I love this guy. He's awesome. He's a really good actor. So, yeah, so this is where he's going to really go into the backstory about his dead kid. You know, he tells him that his kid got shot in a, a hunting accident. And he says, this is so fucking weird. He says, my kid lived for four hours. He was really tough. The doctor said he should have been dead like that. And he snaps. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck kind of conversation were you having? Like, the doctor was like, actually, you know what? Four hours is pretty good. I mean, it feels bad exactly. now, but your kid was like, that's near record time given where he was shot. Hey, hey, doc, when does like a normie kid die from a gunshot <laughs> compared to my awesome kid? Just like hour wise. Right away, you say. Oh, oh, oh. I love the idea of the doctor coming into like the grieving room and being like, I'm trying to do like a good news, bad news thing. Bad news, kid is dead. Good news. <laughs> wow. Four fucking hours he managed to suffer. It was incredible. I skipped my whole lunch. Your son canceled my lunch with his strength and power. Now he's in the void, just screaming, <laughs> you know, just eternal blackness. But four hours before, I thought he was gonna. <laughs> Jesus. He's got some chips. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, but then, so he explains this whole story. Sean warns him about the dangers of vigilante justice, right? He also goes way too far with his offer. He's like, hey, you shouldn't kill the guy who killed your kid. We could get you some help. We'll be a detective team and track down the guy who did it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, Sean, you could just say you'll give him some help. You don't have to fucking form a Scooby squad. Yeah. <laughs> so. But he explains that jail is too good for the guy who killed his son. He deserves to die. And then we Maybe get that was all threesome euphemisms and like I didn't catch it. Oh, sure. You're really bad at theory. catching threesome euphemisms. So, yeah. I can can that. confirm you are bad at catching threesome euphemisms. I've never either. had the opportunity to miss those. That doesn't I even make sense. Like Both Noah and I can confirm you. you have we have watched you with our eyes. Those <laughs> euphemisms. Was it going to be a cool one? At least one of them, yeah. Was, At least one. I would have, I, I would have like, agreed to a two way with either, but <laughs> so. it's stupid. All right. So yeah, so the cops pull up to now. I guess Lucas's ex wife's house. Yeah, we meet this character in sort of a speed meeting type of way. <laughs> this is so funny. They have this thing where like all the information that they would introduce about what's going on in the movie is stuff we already know. So you can watch the actors be like, hey, the movie's happening. Yeah. Can we cut to the scene where you give us backstory? <laughs> right. Well, and also they're trying to hide this tiny, tiny little twist ending where like it's so fucking obvious before it gets there that no one can say anything without revealing it. So we constantly have scenes like this one where the cops show up and they're like, we'd like to talk to you. And she says off camera. And they're like, off camera. <laughs> yes. We hear you have a dead son who was deaded in a situation. <laughs> he was. Come in and I shall talk about it vaguely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they tell her that he's he's got a gun. He's kidnapped some people and he's heading right towards her. Anyway, have a good night. You know, <laughs> they really just get back in their car. All right. Call 911 if you need anything. Yep. So, yeah, but they're going to wait at that house for him, though. They, they, they think he's they think he's there. So meanwhile, back with the fucking Christian power couple, Lucas needs to pee. So we have multiple needs to pee scenes in this movie. OK, the actor who plays Lucas very clearly fucks with the movie here because before he pees completely straight faced, he turns to Sean and goes in the jungle, the mighty jungle. <laughs> The lion eats tonight and then leaves. <laughs> no one laughs. No one indicates that that is a song lyric. No, everyone's just like, yup, those are lines we wrote yeah. for you in the movie. And then he walks out of frame and he's like, 20 bucks for that, 20 bucks for Christopher Walken thing. I'm winning so hard today. <laughs> I've already quadrupled what I was being paid for this movie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, 
He goes to pee at this point, and then we get a quick little scene in the car with the couple, but he does a primal pee scream from yep, the back. Sure does. And I yes. A lot. It was a really good primal pee scream. There you go. I enjoyed it. Not enough kidnapping movies have a guy in the background just being like, oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> And of course, while he's peeing, Sean and and Carrie are failing to come up with the. They're like having a couples fight instead of a planning session. At the same time, once again, just as he gets in, he's like, "All right, you're gonna have to distract him." <clears throat> he's in the car now. Sorry, what was that? Oh, Lucas, distract yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, and this is where Haley sings. And it's rough. Yeah. Because this, this was very clearly like, a, you know, my sister's known for her voice. But I can sing too. <laughs> He's literally, at one point, he goes, wow, she's got a beautiful <laughs> voice. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right, Heath. This guy was a pretty good actor. <laughs> what? He should have done another primal scream at this moment. It would have helped the, yeah. the music oh, here. Sean, did you want to interrupt me before I have to say anything about her voice? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, but she sings Amazing Grace to distract him, and she distracts him so that he doesn't see the sign that shows that they're not going in the direction that he's asked them to go. They're, like, taking him the wrong way now, away from the person he wants to kill. Yeah, their plan now is to drive forever. Yep, well, for all of time. <laughs> and presumably for her to sing Amazing Grace for like four seconds each time they approach a new sign. <laughs> yeah, right. Any sign that has the name of the street they're on. Mary had a little limb. <laughs> <laughs> so. Boobs. Now that I have your attention, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so now the ex-wife, we, we cut to her like making tea for the cops. If you're a cop, in a movie, you have to drink so much fucking tea. I don't really like tea. That's why I can't be a movie cop. Sure. And they always make you tea. So she's talking about, she's giving him tea and talking about how much their son's death is the single factor in Lucas's character bio. There's a tiny moment I want to talk about where he's like, and what about the marriage? And she just very casually says, marriages don't survive that. Trust me. And everyone nods along like, no, I've heard that. I've heard that your marriage can't last if your kid dies. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, she, and and this is where she trots out the little, um, the gloves yardstick thing. <laughs> oh my God. I Okay, be honest. Did you guys have any idea what an, a tremendous amount of time would be dedicated to this stupid fucking the writer was so proud of his little mitten contraption yeah so she pulls out she's like hey look at this thing that I have conveniently stowed right behind this particular wall that we're standing next to <laughs> this is something that Lucas made for our kid it just like comes out of the floor like it's the Stanley <laughs> Cup and there's yeah. steam <laughs> steam rises little burr, burr, burr. yeah and what it is, is it's two yardsticks that are finangled together in such a way that you can draw them out, like telescope them or whatever. And they've got stuffed mittens on either side. And it says, your daddy loves you this much on them. So so two yards at most. <laughs> two <remember>. yards. <laughs> Just to be yeah. clear. There's maximum love of less than two meters. Yeah, if you got this every play, you wouldn't even get a first down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Imagine the actual moment where you try to reveal this to your child, where you're like, hey, I know you've been wondering lately if daddy loves you. Well, would I have built a carrot top-esque prop if I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, and she says, she's like, and every night he would go and he would move it a little bit further out, which means that it started off as just three feet, right? He's just he's like, I love you, you know, about as tall as you are, maybe a little less. And the kid was like, oh, you know what? A little bit more love now. I felt a little bit more, an inch. I felt an inch. Shits himself at preschool. His dad comes in, swipes it back together. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> You get a protractor now. Really, <laughs> now there's two. Uh, you have to th th do some trig to figure out. Trig. Huh? How much daddy loves you. So then one of the cops, and she's like, you know, ah, oh, but then the son died and he turned into a bad person. And the cop says, you know, when he got, when he went into this store to get his noisy potato chips, he paid for them in a very non-criminal way. They're still good in him. Yeah. I know he's kidnapped people but we think the chip paying really is a better indicator of his character <laughs> <laughs> so okay 
So we head back to the car, and now Carrie's like trying to awkwardly distract him every 11 seconds when the route number comes up. We get this amazing moment where he does that. You know how, like, if you try to take your jacket off in a car, there's never enough fucking room to do it. He, We watch him do that for, like, 12 minutes. Okay, both Heath and I have done this, either because of inebriation or the size of our torso. I felt very attacked by this scene. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he, he makes the classic fat guy mistake of trying to go over the head, no, and then he's no. trapped in his jacket for a Now, now your whole like, shirt's coming up with it. Oh, no. Guaranteed. <laughs> Carrie, please, please pull my shirt down. Please pull my shirt down. All right, now the shirt's getting stuck on boob now, sweat, I can't, but I the can't jacket's reach moving. To Fuck. my back with the jacket on. All right, go back to the beginning. I'm going back down with everything. Back down with everything, starting over. Oh, it's got my hair. It's got my hair. <laughs> oh, no. There's a map in my face. Ah, oh, my glasses are in my sleep. I ate a map. My glasses are in my sleep. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm writing my notes like, this is the time to fight back, man. He is already tied. You could just, you know, stop now and you'd probably have time to run you away. Slowly get out of the car. You could just stop and watch him kill himself with his jacket. By his mother in his own jacket. Yeah. Right, yeah. Do a Walter White. <laughs> But yeah, but but this is, of course, where he realizes that they're going the wrong way and he's very angry and yelly with them now. Right. But again, he's made it so obvious at this point he's not going to shoot him that he's just like, I'm going to grab your wife and it is blackout. <laughs> yeah, right. So they, they pull over to the side of the road and Sean's like, I'm not going to help you murder somebody. And he's like, give me the keys, damn it. And Sean throws the keys out of the car down a little cliff next to him. Okay, let me help you, podcast listener. This is supposed to be a big cliff and not like no, no. a very <laughs> obvious ditch. No, no. We see it in the very next scene it's... in the daylight. It is not. <laughs> okay, but he fucking hangs himself up like Cliff Hopper. Yeah. That was supposed to definitely be something. Yep. No, in the writer's mind, it was a fucking sheer drop. It, it, <laughs> as it is, it's like, you know, one of those things that you could probably use to walk down on your hike, but not to walk back up. Right. So, yeah, so he throws his key out of the car like a fucking toddler. It's hilarious. He might as well eat the keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, good now. Oh, wow, it's really big. <laughs> so, Does anybody have a map? Yeah, so Lucas gets mad, punches him in the face, in the face hard enough to knock him out. It's a very hard punch to the face. That was that was that was funny though. It was. Yeah. He's like he's like all right. Oh, I threw the keys. What are you gonna do now, kidnapper? <laughs> Clonk. <laughs> it's like I actually don't need a gun to kill you. You're so much smaller than me. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna do. But now I've punched you in the face, so I can think about it. This makes me happy. It made Heath happy too. Yeah. Right there you go. And then he drags Carrie out of the car ominously, and we do a very slow and very long fade to black. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this that's this movie's idea of climactic and exciting. So we're going to pause to let all that action sink in, let you catch your <laughs> breath and whatnot, or at least let the actor that plays Lucas Blackstone catch his breath. It does really stop like a commercial, like a television <laughs> commercial yeah. for a while. Yeah. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Is it even possible to give a shit about Sean's affair? Are we going to watch them play I Spy at some point in this movie? If not, what the hell are they going to do with the other 30 minutes of runtime? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the hypnagogic conclusion of Taken by Grace. Hi, I'm here for my personal training session. Nice. What's up, dude? I'm Bryson. You must be Keith. It, it's, it's actually Heath. Reith. Heath. Beef. You think my name is Beef? You know, it doesn't matter. The point is we're going to get you ripped. You're going to be shredded. You're going to be unhappy, <sighs> uncomfortable, and deeply, deeply broken. No, 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 no. Don't want any of that. Look, I'm just trying to get healthy at my own pace and hit my fitness goals. Oh, so then you want FitBod. What's FitBod? FitBod's smart workout app gives you custom-tailored workouts that you need to keep the burn going all summer long wherever you go. No aloe required. FitBot's algorithm tracks your progress and adapts each session to your specific goals and equipment. So whether you're just getting started or you're a seasoned gym goer, you know every workout is scientifically designed to push you to the next level. Wow, that sounds great. Do you do that? No, no. I just I usually just monologue about my problematic beliefs while you listen. Got it. 
It's true. I've been using FitBod to work out since they became a sponsor, and it's a great way to keep in shape no matter where I am. Then what are you doing at the gym? Well, with FitBod, I can put in the equipment available wherever I'm working out, and it creates a workout for me. Cool. Crush your summer fitness goals with personalized workouts from FitBod that improve as you do. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash gam. That's 25% off your subscription or try it free at fitbod.me slash gam. All right, I'm sold. So yeah, I think I'm going to skip this, man. You don't want to get scrunched. No, no, I don't want to get scrunched. Thank you. All set. <laughs> hey, are you the night manager here? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, that's me. Listen, buddy, we got a word on a break-in which led us to a campsite. Yeah, at the campsite, we found info which led us to a cell phone which, uh, you know, we, we GPS tracked to the side of a highway. Then, using our detective skills, we figured the people in question might have stopped through here. Anything you can tell us? Yeah, actually, uh, a guy stepped through here with a couple. Uh, he was kind of beardy, looking nervous. That's our man. And the couple? We believe they may be in danger. Oh, yeah. They were a, a black couple, both with short hair. Um, he was wearing jeans. Wait, wait, and wait, a wait, tank. wait, wait, wait. They were black. Yeah. And she was wearing. Uh, like I think a- it's best we go back to the station and wait to see how this plays out. Um, yeah, I'm going to burn all this paperwork. I'm sure everybody's fine. Great. Uh, yikes. Yeah. So if you hear about a white couple going missing, you uh, go ahead and give us a call. Okay. Stay white. And we're back for still more of this shit. When we last saw our heroes, Sean got knocked the fuck out and Lucas dragged Carrie from the car. And we're going to rejoin the action with a 14 minute establishing shot of day now <laughs> as Sean slowly comes to. So he knocked him out for an eight hour night of sleep, apparently. <laughs> yeah, by hitting him in the cheek, in the che- how or he just punched him in the face and it was like. Okay, so we're at an impasse in terms of this argument. You want to sleep on it? Okay. <laughs> and they slept on it? Yeah. One or the other. So he looks out of the car and he sees that Lucas is passed out next to the car and that his gun is like slightly further away. So he's got an opportunity to leap out of the car and get a hold of the gun. So to be clear, Lucas knocked him out, did something, placed the gun several feet away from himself and took a nap nearby on the ground outside the car the reality of this situation is only going to get crazier from there yeah so he jumps out he grabs the well first he's got to cut the zip ties which apparently are on his wrist again never saw that happen and it wasn't that way earlier but anyway he cuts the zip ties he jumps out he gets the hold of the gun and just then lucas wakes up and he's like where's carrie <laughs> and he goes right i killed her with my gun I bet you're going to shoot me now, huh? Remember when I asked what you would do if I killed her? You said you uh-huh. would shoot me? I bet you do. I bet you do. Okay. Can I spoil a fucking thing here or no? Oh, absolutely. Because it's... Still- of course. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I, this is when I realized for sure that this was what was happening. He's Trig. He's, he's obviously fucking Trig. And he wants to kill himself because he's sad that he killed his own kid. In a hunting accident. And now he's trying to get Sean yes. to help him with that. But he's not. But he's not. It's a trick. Exactly. It's a test. <laughs> right. Well, uh, but, what was I don't understand the test part of it. What has been accomplished? So he's just testing to see if they would really if, if if Sean would really try to kill him or if he would really turn him in the way that he said that he would earlier. But he's taken the bullets out of the gun. Right. Right. The gun is not loaded. The guy is trying to kill himself. It would make a lot of fucking sense for him to just not take the bullets out of the fucking gun. <laughs> right the test e- either you win your thing or the t- <laughs> it's so stupid yeah. yeah but sean ultimately is like no i won't shoot you even though you killed my wife because i don't believe in vigilante justice get in the car and he's like oh it was all a test you don't actually have bullets how about that shit huh and then sean gives him back the gun all right well if it was a test i can't think of any reason why you wouldn't have this gun <laughs> They're say they're standing next to the cliff, right? The the what's supposed to be this steep drop cliff. He could just throw the gun over the side, but no, he's like, oh well, all right, I passed the test. I guess this is your property. This guy is such a good marriage counselor. I'm telling you, this is amazing. <laughs> it's a long con. This is genius. Yeah, he says no. It turns out 
that no, I didn't kill your wife. She's tied up. Just uh, I, I literally drug her out of sight, tied her up, gagged her, and then laid down, laid my gun down, and then laid on, next to it on the fuck next to the fucking tire of your car until you woke up in the morning. And then I was like, me, 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 for like a while. <laughs> It took you a while to wake you, up. I, I hit you at like midnight. I thought you would wake up in like a couple of the seconds. It was really. <laughs> Hillary Duff crapped her pants. We should wait because she she like shit her pants. You know, her sister's in the movie, but just so you know, Hillary did that. <laughs> she was hanging out. She's a weird lady. So, yeah, so he rearms his kidnapper that he runs off to find Carrie and she's tied hilariously loosely around this tree. Like he's, she's like, like to the point where she would have been like, oh, stand up. I didn't think of stand up. Shit. She might as well be bread tied <laughs> to the telephone pole. <laughs> Just spun around and tucked under the, the, the tree. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just a map wrapped around her. Around <laughs> I also just I have to point this out. A car drives by yes. in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be this deserted ass road where like for hours she's been tied to this tree now. And then just, yeah, there's just some commuters in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Just some lady tied up and gagged next to the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, should... I, bet, I bet you this is like a Christian test thing. Maybe a marriage counselor doing like a long con. I don't know. It's fine. We're going to keep driving. One way or the other. I'm already running late, and I need time to get a cigarette before I clock in. So <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Is that Hillary Duff? No. Nope, no. Nope. Not Hillary Duff. <laughs> we can keep going. So he unties her. He gets her out, and, and she says, it's over. And he's like, no, it's not. Believe it or not, there's still another 20 fucking minutes in this thing, even though everybody's already figured out the twist ending. So she's like, well, what is even the plot? And, and he says, now the plot is that we have to stop him from committing his murder, right? We got to stop him from killing the guy that killed his son. So they run back to the car to find the keys. And he's like, oh, it'll take a miracle from God to find. Oh, wait, here they're They're right it's, here. Okay. I see them. It's it's daytime now. So we see it's just really not that steep. It's no, just like it's a little, really not. Little bit of an angle. It's insane. And he was he was throwing the keys Lefty backhand out the window with the other hand. It's like 20 feet away. The keys are 20 feet away. Yeah. Well, and they have to keep acting like they're at this. You know, she's like, oh, stand back. This is very dangerous for us to stand next to this, you know, slightly steep grade here. Hold on. I got a plan where we're going to halo drop out of a helicopter <laughs> and grab yes. this. Have you ever been standing near children who are playing some kind of pretend game and they're like, oh, no, you're about to fall in the fire. And you're like, I'm actually just going to go get another hot dog. But I appreciate it. <laughs> That's how this scene yes. looks. Uh, is like, yes. Oh, no, we're going to fall off the cliff. OK. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he's like, oh, I'll get a rope and I'll lower myself down. And I'm like, OK, well, if you've got a rope, then this is literally not at all dangerous. There's no danger here whatsoever. And the soundtrack's like, I beg to differ. <laughs> I wanted the rope to break and he just falls like right there. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't know. Oh, well, that's not really all that bad. I kind of kind of bruised my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because if this were a cliff, where the fuck would the keys be? It's fine. You know yeah, what? I right, know what yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're hanging in midair three feet down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he repels down this hill. He's just walking backwards or whatever. He's going past Stallone from Cliffhanger doing something <laughs> with the ice. So he, he gets the keys and he climbs back up and it's super dangerous. He almost slips, but she catches him at the last second. And she's like, oh, you almost would have had to come back up again because you may have stumbled for two feet or so before breaking your, your slide. Do you want back teen for your elbow? <laughs> so, In this action scene? That yes. we <laughs> so they get back in the car. They go to stop him. Now, what they do is they, they drive to some rando's house and they call the cops. But I like he's 300 seconds head start. Right. They right. would be able to see him on the road from wherever they were. <laughs> right. They had to drive past him to get to the yes, place. Right. Where they there was were no going. housing. He couldn't possibly have been in a house by that point. There were no campsites nearby. <laughs> also, this is just a note on like bad movie making. So when you do the we went to a rando's house to call the cops scene. Right. You need to first show the characters asking the person to use their phone. They don't do that. So nope. it's just a scene with him on the phone and a third guy standing there like, 
ding, ding, yeah, ding, right. Ding, that we've never seen then, or met. Yes, exactly. Right, but four minutes into the scene, he's like, "Thanks for letting us use your phone." But I was like, "Oh, okay, that's who the fuck that guy is." <laughs> I literally, I was like, "Man, I've heard of booms in the shop, but you got the entire fucking grip." <laughs> also, there's a big, loud breather guy walking past our house outside. It looks like you went past him, and now he's <laughs> yeah, he's catch- just catching up with us now. Is that him? <laughs> Looks like the guy you drew in soap. I mean, it's a dead likeness. So, yeah. So, and also, by the way, we, we get to watch for like four minutes of him not giving the other person on the phone remotely enough time to have said the thing he's reacting to, which is always <laughs> fun. Yeah. So he tells the cops, hey, we, this is the address where he's going. And and then Carrie's like, you know, I think we could get there quicker than the cops. And he's like, we shouldn't do that. And she's like, we should. And he's like, OK. And then so they go and they're going to try to talk him down. <laughs> Should we let the police handle this? No, we need to stop this murder. Yep. She punches him in the face. All right, we're in the past. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, at 9 right, right. <laughs> have a whole test set up by then. So, okay. Meanwhile, the cops are still sitting in front of uh, Lucas's ex wife's house when they get the call. They run up to the, her house and they're like, hey, what's the significance of this address? This is where he's going. She's like, that's our old house. That's where we used to live back when he was killing our kid. Yeah. And they have this moment again. They're still clinging to this twist where they go, we believe he's going to murder the man who killed your son. And she does like a sad face, but she can't say anything because it's him. (laughs) Right. Because it would clearly. Yeah. It's a fucking insane (laughs) conversation. (laughs) Yes. She would be like, no, he killed our son. She wouldn't be like, oh, I get it. The metaphor of the thing. I'm going to talk past you for a minute or two and then you'll leave. And it'll be, it's so crazy. The movie does la, la, la. I can't hear yes, you to itself to here. Itself. And then it cuts. <laughs> so, uh, I would tell you what that means to me, but it would spoil the movie. Yeah. Are you doing an inside joke? We're cops doing a murder. <laughs> invest- a murder yeah, you know what? We're leaving. And a kidnapping. Yeah. So, okay. So Lucas apparently he hitched a ride with some people and, and then by then he's got to think oh fuck man I kidnapped p- these guys for nothing I could have just hitched he fucking again it's just a, it's a it's a two seconds of the movie that invalidates the entire rest of the film yes oh right fucking uber right. god damn it we're <laughs> <laughs> like $33 I didn't have to kidnap a couple yeah, and try and was- fuck them <laughs> do a whole thing about their marriage I could have just gotten into a car and then killed myself <laughs> Yeah, and then, okay, Carrie and Sean are headed this, uh, to the address as fast as they can without exceeding, exceeding the speed limit or driving dangerously, of course. I wrote my notes at this point. I bet these two have such boring sex. Oh, God. Like, they're both pretty hot, but, like, I would not watch this couple fuck, right? Nope. Is there a more boring thing than missionary? <laughs> is there, like, a, is there a position where you hover near each other? <laughs> <laughs> soaking maybe soaking and they're both faking an orgasm <laughs> what's the opposite of soaking ringing yeah <laughs> so yeah so but lucas gets to his old house he's toured around the backyard and, and he grabs a shovel apparently there's a box full of backstory buried next to the tree buried zero inches in the ground yep <laughs> it is literally a single scoop of dirt under the ground yeah uh-huh and oh, there's also this is such a weird thing to point out, but there's this moment where he goes and he's like, ah, the old swing that my son used to love to swing in right over this partial rock wall. <laughs> there's a, like a fucking half rock wall right under that swing. That's insane. Yeah, this kid was doomed from the start. I mean, hunting <laughs> accident or no, he wasn't seeing 16. <laughs> it's an obstacle. It's a it's a game. You make that you can win or lose it. Right. No, exactly. It's the it's the nail in your muffin of uh, swings. How you get tough. Okay, now I feel like it's turned into me. (laughs) So anyway, so he he digs up his special box of pertinent memories, uh, which includes, by the way, an I love my dad card that his son made. (laughs) I will never die. (laughs) (laughs) I love you six inches by four inches. You say you're... (laughs) You're a dick. <laughs> so, yeah. So and and then the, there's this great moment where the lady who like lives in that house now shows up and she's like, "Hey, you can't fucking dig shit up in my yard, dude." Yes, I yes I can. It's the end of the movie. It's already, I can. Did it's, you can't have it in the movie. You literally go sit in a closet. 
Yeah. He just walks into her house and shoves her into a closet. This is, like, you got to at least take out the gun for this to work, right? That otherwise, You might as well put her in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, he might as well clap his hands and she just shatters into dust. And he's like, good. Not in the, not in the movie anymore. I'm going to watch my sad dead kid DVD. Yeah. I really want him to get in and like she doesn't have a DVD player because everything's streaming now. And he's like, ah, fuck it. Do you have a PlayStation? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to download. Why would I have to download an app for that? There's a, It's built into the fucking thing. I'm gonna go. I'm going to Circuit City, but I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now the TV's doing an update. What does that even mean? The TV has software. <laughs> what is the PlayStation on HDMI one or? T- <laughs> it's a video game. It, that's not well, the right that's remote. Not, that's what? How many remotes are there? <laughs> this is the Apple TV. <laughs> Honestly, so much a better movie. I would watch. <laughs> he has to change batteries on remote. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, but just then, just as he's putting the DVD into the ladies' DVD player, Carrie and Sean pull up, and we get them pulling up. We get the video that he's playing, and we see that mom on the video has forgot the hot dog buns, which was exactly the lie he used to butter Carrie and Sean up before just pulling a gun out of them, on them and invalidating the need to butter them up. Remember? <laughs> yeah. But this is also where it reveals, because she says, oh, come on, Trig. And we're supposed to go, oh, he's Trig. <laughs> As though oh, we hadn't God. figured that out yet. The actors in the movie failed to do an O, right? Right. Like, well, obviously, well, obviously yeah, he's what, he was, why else would he have been in jail for manslaughter, guys? We established that earlier. And, and he turns to him, he's like, yeah, you get it now. And they were like, yeah, man, it was super, super obvious in act two. Like, yeah, you said boy slaughter when you did that reveal. <laughs> it made it real. Just super, super <laughs> obvious. But yeah, but Sean and Carrie need to teach Lucas an important lesson about forgiveness. And so they talk about their his affair more and how he's made mistakes too, not shooting kids levels of mistakes, but mistakes nonetheless. And God forgave him. So... It's like, this is a great moment where he's like, no, I cheated on my wife. And he's like, seriously? And he's like, I have no idea why I compared those two things. I'm so sorry. (laughs) That's fucking stupid. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, and then they're going to spend about four and a half minutes kind of getting us on the side that maybe he should just go ahead and shoot himself. (laughs) Right? Because he says, you know what I said earlier about my kid being tough. That wasn't true, actually. All the other kids picked on him for being too much of a sissy. And I'm like, oh, my God, did you... Shoot your fucking kid for being too kid for being a sissy? Yeah. I feel like that was the script and they like didn't really change it. They just cut the part out that said exactly that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Why else would he bring that up? That's crazy to bring up otherwise. Yes. She interrupts him. She's like, no, no, you were hunting and you were drunk. It was an accident. Well, okay. So this is where the cops come in with his ex-wife. Right. They all right. come in at the, to the house at the same time. And they're like, yeah, we're here too." They, they come in. The cops come in like kids playing cop, you know? Yeah. They do dive rolls for yeah. no reason. Just back and <laughs> forth while they're talking to him. Yeah. And he says, oh, I murdered my kid. And the, the ex-wife is like, no, it was an accident. You just took a five-year-old out hunting, left him in a truck by himself, got drunk and started shooting at anything that would move. And <laughs> shot at the, she literally says, you reacted to the noise in the corner of your eye. Sorry. <laughs> you heard a noise in the corner of your eye. First of all, that's that's insane. And your immediate answer was to shoot that direction. Yes. Do hunters hear stuff and just spin and fire? <laughs> like fucking Dick Cheney? What's happening? Because if you're if you're not quick enough, you turn around and there's a deer with a handgun out and it's like, I guess they got yeah. the drop on you this time. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, the Supreme Court has affirmed your right to turn around immediately and shoot at whatever you heard with your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, the corner of your eye. <laughs> so. Also, not that this has any relevance, but he has a hunting rifle with a scope. That's not like a quick fire. You know, like, whoa, right, you don't yeah. like whip. <laughs> The scope, literally, he would have to be looking through the scope to shoot his kid. Listen, Oswald was able to do it, no problem. Yeah, I know. He he nailed it. Yeah. 
<laughs> so definitely the real story. Allegedly. Also, there's a great moment. The wife is walking forward to, to like talk him down or whatever. The cops never take their guns off of him. They've got him in this like, don't shoot yourself or we'll kill you kind of a threat going on. But they never take their guns down even when she's in between them and him. <laughs> so <laughs> there's this great moment where they're just pointing their guns at the back of her head. <laughs> yeah. Can you do Neil Strafe? Just please really quick. There we go. There's so I mean, look, we're pretty close to the end here. Can I can I throw out a controversial hot take? Um, no more hunting. Well, yes, that's a non-controversial. Just, hot take. I don't I don't fucking care if you like anything <laughs> about. No, just we're not doing that anymore. Fuck your face. Yeah, this movie should have acknowledged guns as the non-controversial hot take. But my controversial hot take is like maybe you shouldn't forgive yourself if you shoot your child in a drunken stupor. Yeah, like maybe maybe you just live with that one or die with it. Right. That's what. Like yeah, everything in this movie from this point on is just like. Oh, see, now I'm rooting for act one version of you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I liked him in act one. Yeah. I hope you don't learn this lesson. <laughs> yeah. I had this sort of like realization as I was waiting for this movie to wrap up that like one of the poisonous messages of Christianity is because Jesus can forgive you for anything that everything deserves forgiveness. But like, right. No, no absolutely <laughs> not. This is literally a perfect example of not that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You took your kid out into the woods. You had a gun. You're drunk and you're like, hey, kid. Dressed in camo. Dre yes, dressed in camo. No orange, no bright orange or anything like that. Yeah, you dressed your kid up in camo and you said, I'm going to go shoot anything that moves. So don't move. <laughs> don't get into the don't make a noise in the corner of my eye that I could see the noise of. <laughs> And stay next to this truck. The two of us are going to go drunk hunting. We'll be back in like nine hours. Son, what did daddy tell you? I'm not enough of a man to stand near you while you shoot. <laughs> yep, that's right. And what else did I tell you? Don't move or you'll shoot instantly. That's right. That's what I said. Daddy loves you as much as a yardstick. You know? <laughs> yeah, do you want me oh, to move the yardstick that's in That's how or far out? he was. That's how far he was when he shot him. The kid was too far. That was <laughs> I only love you for two Should've yards, Should have gotten buddy. a third yardstick. I love you point blank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but so he but he decides to set down the gun. There's this great moment where the cop shuffles in, grabs the gun and shuffles back out. And then like everybody's just like, all right, well, I guess that wraps up the plot. Noah is really ready to smoke a bowl. So <laughs> but then, then I think the, the ex-wife is like, don't don't arrest him yet. We want to watch the rest of the home video. He's having trouble with the DVD menu. Let me just give him a little <laughs> hand with that. He's on. And we're going to watch it. They watch the end of the movie together and then he breaks the love stick. So, okay. So there's this amazingly stupid moment here. This is like, you almost have to try to be this fucking dumb, right? Because they're like, hey, we're going to bury this box now with a bunch of our memories in it. Is there anything else you want to put in? How about this DVD that we're recording directly to with a device that records directly to DVD that never existed <laughs> anywhere in the goddamn history of the world, right? Like, they have to know they're making a movie. That's what they're doing. You can't make a movie without knowing how movies work. It's not even possible to think that. <laughs> Jesus. And then she's like, look, I brought her along the yardstick glove contraption. He's like, I was wondering if that was going to come back. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad we're using this here. Let me do some space work with it here as the music swells beneath me. <laughs> ba -da -da, da -da -da, da -da, carrot top. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> so, oh, it slipped out. It's broken now. <laughs> yeah. And just when you're thinking, wait, did the cops also forgive him? We get a quick wrap up scene where the movie acknowledges that he is, yes, still in trouble for breaking and entering, stealing a gun, kidnapping two people, forcing his way into this lady's house and then falsely imprisoning her in a closet. Right. It tries to wrap it up for us in title cards. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like they were like, yeah, come on, guys. This DVD camera that we're using to make this movie is running out of DVD. So uh, <laughs> he went to jail, but then he found Jesus or something. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. There's also right before we get to the title cards, there's this moment where like we have to wrap up with Sean and Carrie. You know, they watch the cop car drive away with him in it. And they're like, hey, are we over our marital problems? And 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 she's like, we sure are. You know, and then there's a little heart wipe or something. And then the cop car drives back. I've been a marriage counselor the whole time. Yeah. Nailed it. What? In your face. 
You love each other. Here's your diplomas. You're married now. And then there's this. Okay, so then the title cards come up. First, we get a, a Bible quote, Romans 8, 1. And then it says, you know, so Lucas Blackstone, yes, he went back to jail for a few years. But then afterwards, he found Jesus and he started a ministry called Maximum Forgiveness because his son's name was Max. I would pay. Oh, I thought it was because it was like a super max jail where he was. <laughs> That's great. I would pay so much money to watch him explain that name. Yes. He's like, hey, everybody, you're probably wondering why we're called Maximum Forgiveness. That's the son that I murdered. <laughs> so who's ready to learn about morality from me? It's like heathen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so also, and then after that, we were like, Wow, Wolf, what a dumb ending. They come up with an even dumber title card that's like, oh, and uh, Sean and Carrie live in an RV in the Oregon wilderness now, so things are probably going great for them. That's the thing that happens after things go great for you, right? They never poop indoors. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, that's going to do it for our review of Taken by Grace, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to pay penance against next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Oh, we'll be watching the Cristiano short film Late One Night. Oh, it's always now, a great time. If you're time. thinking Cristiano Brothers, no, no. no. Oh, really? It's just Dave in his early solo phase of yeah. his career. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. He didn't have the genius wisdom of his brother. <laughs> awesome. So it's kind of bad. Yeah. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 359 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out a time by leaving a five-star review anywhere you can and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law office of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written in performed by Ryan Slot and people drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I have no illusions. Promise to work harder, earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The Supreme Court of the United States went on to decide that some fucking kids are going to get shot sometimes. Morgan would finally get through a sentence that contained Supreme Court and going to get shot without having to beep it. <laughs> Bet he didn't get through that one. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs>